Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody in God's house this morning. Welcome our live stream audience as well. And I'm so thankful to be here once again to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're going to open with prayer and ask the Lord to be with our time together and, and that he would have his divine will and way in everything that is said and done here. And maybe you have needs on your heart you'd like to make known by an upraised hand. We know there's so many needs in, in our congregation and and for those watching, we want to uh, especially remember uh, Jennifer Hurley Dials, who's uh, in Lexington in the hospital. Well, I think she's been transferred, uh, but remember her and that they would figure out what's wrong with her. So uh, just remember her and remember all the other many needs that we have. And I want to say thank the Lord and thank all of you for making Easter weekend such a success, and thank God for how he moved and worked in our midst last weekend, and we're looking forward to the same. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for how you've blessed us, and we ask that you would uh, move and work in our midst. Lord, we, we ask that you would be with these many needs that have been mentioned and, and signified by the upraised hand. Lord, we pray that you would just undertake for each and every one that you would help us in Jesus' name and be with this service once again. In your precious Son's name, Jesus, amen. Amen. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. I'm redeemed today, and if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you are too. Let's sing it like we mean it. I'm redeemed, and I'm redeemed from the darkness of the night that so thickly enveloped my soul. In my heart there have gleamed rays of wonderful light where the waves of thy glory do roll. I'm redeemed, praise the Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the I'm redeemed by the blood from the power of And the victory I have over death Oh, that wonderful flood Oh, I felt it's power to see When I plunged in it fathomless death I'm redeemed Praise the Lord I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb I am saved from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The redeemed, they shall walk in the pathway of the just, which shines brighter and brighter each day. They shall sing and shall talk with the bright angelic host, where all sorrow and sighs flee away. I'm redeemed, praise the Lord, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm redeemed, praise the Lord, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. One more time. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 
I am saved from all sin and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. There is no God, thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. These are the days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteousness being restored And though these are days of great trial Of famine and darkness and sword here we are, the voice in the desert crying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice to year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, dry bones becoming his flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call. So lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice in the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice in the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation Ephesians 1 7 says I'm redeemed in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses accessing accessed by according to the riches of him I'm thankful for that today I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me A sinner condemned unclean How marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me I stand amazed 
in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean singing how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me he took my sins and my sorrows he made them his veil he bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone how marvelous how wonderful and my shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me when with the ransomed in glory his face I at last shall see T'will be my joy through the ages To sing of his love for me Singing how marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall ever be Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. I worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, I worship His holy name. I sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I 
I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and men forever more. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, I worship your holy name, yes I worship your holy on his head spear in his side yet it was a heartache that made him cry he gave his life so you would understand is there any way you could say no to this man Christ himself we're standing here, face full of glory, and eyes full of tears. He held out his arms and his nail-printed hand. Is there any way you could say no to this man? How could you look in his tear-stained eyes? Knowing it's you he's thinking of Could you tell him you're not ready To give him your life Could you say you don't think you need his love Jesus is here His arms open wide You can see him with your heart You'd stop looking with your eyes He left it up to you He's done all that he can do And is there any way You could say no to this man How could you look in His tear-stained eyes Knowing it's you he's thinking of could you tell him you're not ready to give him your life? Could you say you don't think you'd need his love? Thorns on his head, your life in his hands. Is there any way you could say no to this man? Is there any way? You could say no to this man.
is there any way you could say no to this man? So thankful for his love and mercy. Amen. And it is good to be able to stand before you once again and share God's word and uh, to look into what God has for us today. And back in our series, Mission Mind, Book of Acts. And, you know, last week we talked about being Easter people and being a people that believe in the resurrection and that uh, Jesus has made us new creations, not just one day, but every day, and he resurrected us. And then how does that play out as a church and as a, as a body, as Easter people, how do we continue to stay Easter people? And the text that we're going to pick up on today is, in fact, studying for it, and this was some a few weeks ago, I thought, how in the world are we going to teach this? Because uh, when you get to it, you're going to realize this was one of the texts when they used to teach this in children's church to me when I was a kid. It used to scare me to death. And two weeks after that, I always made sure I did everything just right. But this text is not to scare us, it is a warning. But not necessarily just a warning, but an admonishment to be watchful. To be watchful, not just for ourselves, but lovingly as a body, as a community of people being mindful. Because as a church, in a world of confusion and foggy-headedness, we need a body of people that are clear-minded. Right? Because if we're all looking for answers, and everybody is, we want to have the answer that is the clearest and the most distinct because we know we're Easter people. We know that we have the answer, right? We should be like that one kid in in your class that is very smart, and every time the teacher asks a question, their hand immediately goes up, and they get excited about it, right? Ooh, 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 ooh. Pick me, pick me, pick me. Well, that should be us as Easter people. When our friends, when our family come to us with the crises and the cares of this world, we go, ooh, ooh, I got the answer. Pick me, pick me, pick me. But to be that, we must be clear-headed and focused on what it means to be a believer. And the church said, amen. Now, I know you're going to wonder when we start how this is going to play out, but just hold on, because there is a definite truth and an encouragement, an exciting thing at the end of this. Acts chapter 5, the first 14 verses. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, I, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it sold, was it not thine own in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing to thine heart? How hast thou not lied unto man, but unto God? But Ananias, hearing those words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And when the young and the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Uh Uh-huh. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. And then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Wow. 
Then fell she down straight away at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth and buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon all the many that has heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest there is no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women. May God bless the reading of his word. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, when I heard that, and they lied to Peter, whoo, and then they just fell dead, yeah, let me just tell you, I walked real good, did real good for two weeks. Lord, I promise I ain't going to do nothing bad. I'll even back off on my sister and won't pick on her as much. Oh, I was, boy, I was like an angel for two weeks. And then, you know, you kind of forget about him dropping dead. He just kind of want to be a shepherd of the devil again. Or you get tempted to anyway. Now, y'all can sit there and look all like that don't ever happen to you. But that's all right. I know the truth. See. I didn't realize something then that I do now and that God's word is very clear about. When we're saved, we're covered by his blood. Now this is a portion of the sermon where you all should amen because there's going to be a whole lot of good stuff that you're going to want to grab onto, okay? So this is where we're covered by his blood And Jude tells us, to him is able to keep us from falling. So if we're covered by his blood and we have the power to withstand sin, amen, right, we should not have to worry about dropping dead. Amen. Does that mean that we have to Quit paying attention to temptation. Absolutely not. In fact, it says that when this happened, God taught his people a lesson because he punished them with death. And it said great fear came upon the people. Fear came upon the congregation. But it wasn't just fear like I'm scared I'm going to die. It was an awe in the, of the power of God. And then they saw God's people still doing miracles and God's spirit being manifest and doing things among God's people. Amen. They were on Solomon's porch. Solomon's porch was the place where Jesus walked. There were two columns there and they, they had... Uh, Hebrew names, and one meant justice and the other meant strength. And it was there in Solomon's porch that Jesus healed, Jesus taught, and he stood between strength and justice. And between strength and justice, the power of God and the justice of God, stood the mercy of God named Jesus. And there he performed many miracles and the power of God and was in one accord in one place. When God's people get together and we're in one accord, when we pray together, when two or three are gathered in His name in one accord, many things will happen. God's Spirit will be present. People will accept Jesus. People will see the joy of the Lord as our strength, right? Because when you look at the last of that, yes, there was some punishment for sin and all of us know that sin has consequences. Even forgiven sin has consequences. Right? But I'm thankful for the mercy of God that we look at these warnings and when we heed them and we try to take care of one another, not that we're going around being the unofficial sin police. No, 
that don't work. Hmm. I don't understand. They supposed to be a teacher, and they wear that. Hmm. Hmm. And I don't know why when we get judgmental, we just look sour. You ever, now, now, some, nobody in here but people I know, they don't look sour. They, they have, it's just like they think it's their spiritual gift to criticize everybody. And they can do it with a smile. Uh, uh, uh. Look at that, look at that. I can't believe it. Pastor lets her teach it. She wears stuff like that. Now, I'm just giving an example. That don't happen around but people I know. And uh, the thing is, if we are watching in our own life, because we know what, what two things have we already determined. If we're saved, we've been saved from sin, and the possibility to sin when we grow closer and become more set apart with Jesus, gets less and less. Does that mean the possibility is still there? Definitely. But we don't have to sin every day. It's not sin you will, sin you must. If you don't, you're going to bust. No. God can keep us from that. Amen. And when we live like God's just going to wink at everything, we better watch out because we will, in the end of time, wind up dead apart from God. But that also doesn't mean that we have to just live in fear all the time. Oh, no. Brother Brian, you know, we had Easter breakfast last week and more bacon. And I really did, but there was only two pieces left, and I wanted to save it for somebody else. But I really want more bacon. So is that a lie? Am I going to go to hell? Now, you're laughing, and that sounds like a real broad example. But, you know, I had that really happen with a young person who was scared to death he was going to go to hell because he was thinking of somebody else and wanted to give him the last drop of milk for their cereal instead of putting it on his own. Now, to me, that kid is living a little to the fearful side. But when we live in Graceland, we realize that preferring our brother is not a sin. So, yeah, we may want more bacon, we may want more milk, but when we let our brother have it, then God is glorified. Amen? So, when we are walking in the God, things will happen, but we must be mindful of sin. If David, who God called a man after his own heart, Sin. and prayed Lord search me that there be no wicked way in me should we not search our own hearts there's an old song and I, I couldn't find it just hit me this morning I couldn't find it to sing it but search me Lord oh search me Lord if you find anything that shouldn't be take it out and strengthen me I want to be right I want to be saved, I want to be whole, so search me, Lord. And that should be our prayer. A believer should live in a constant state of repentance. And that doesn't mean that I go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lord. No, it means that we should live in a, as David prayed every day, search me, Lord, and make sure, make sure there's no wicked way in me. Because we have Someone who supernaturally takes away our sin. It said, if we confess, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Now, there's a difference when we willfully, continually sin. And there's a difference between a sin and a mistake. Can I get an amen? There's a lot of good church people that get all tore up because they made a mistake. A mistake is you didn't mean to do it, you didn't really maybe know it was wrong, or a mistake is also um, when your mouth gets in gear before your mind gets in motion and you say something that you, you it just come out. And then later the Lord hits you like a ton of bricks. Now you shouldn't have said that and you know you 
you shouldn't have said. And then you go and you apologize and say, Lord, help me not to say that it kind of stuff anymore and apologize. You know, if you've been saved a long time, it's hard sometimes to say, search me, Lord. Because if you've been there, you don't want to do it because you're like, I, I don't, you know, I'm doing good right now. I don't want God to point out anything. I'm not doing good. But we need to constantly search ourselves. And then as we search ourselves, we also say, Lord, you know, if one of my brothers or sisters is stumbling and they need some light, they need some help, show me how to do that. Now, that, again, that doesn't mean you just bounce up to them and call out every fault you see. Because that's bad too, right? See, I believe God forms relationships in the body of Christ that you can have brothers and sisters that earn the right to do that for you. Because iron sharpens iron. If you see something in me, come and tell me. Now, don't tell everybody else first. I know there's people, <clears throat> good church people, that their idea of a secret is to one person at a time. But... <laughs> Nobody in here but people I know. But you come to me if you got a problem. Say, hey, you know, this don't look right, right? I've had to do that to people, and I've had people do that to me. And I'm thankful for that. But as a body, we, we shouldn't step back in condemnation because in Christ there is no condemnation, Romans 8, 1, right? But, and we don't get up publicly. Now, there are times when that is biblically warranted. But before you take that route, make sure you do the other steps. You go to them if they won't listen. Then you take some more people. If they still won't listen, then you come to me, and then we go that route. But a body of believers should always look out for one another because it's not just my job. It's all of our jobs to make sure each other get to heaven, and sin will keep us out of there. So the point to this today is, very simple. To be clear-minded as a child of God is to search our hearts every day for sin and let him root it out, tear it out, we repent of it, and to help us to be mindful of each other, to hold sins against one another, but love covers a multitude of them, and to pray for them. And I'm not talking about there's a difference between preference and sin. Just because somebody don't do it the way you want it done don't mean that's a sin. You may think it is, but it's not. Just because somebody might not serve the Lord or worship the Lord the way you do doesn't mean that's a sin, right? But if they're truly doing something to damage themselves or other people, with sinful behaviors and sinful attitudes, then if you're truly a brother and you have a close relationship with them, go to them. Or if God tells you to. There might be times in your Christian experience if you're praying, search me, Lord, and he'll send you to somebody that you really don't think you've got a real close relationship with or you haven't talked to in a real long time, and they'll just happen to call you up. And God allows you to speak some truth into their life with love and done in the right spirit. See, the thing about this relationship with God is, you know, all of us have sinned, and, but when we're saved, we don't have to sin, but sin, when we're walking in God's spirit, sin is not a probability, but it's a possibility. And so we should always live in a constant state of repentance. But, you know, many times, even if we mess up even a little bit, we think God's done with us, don't we? And then we try to do... We're just like, well, I just messed it up, so I'll just, you know. It's kind of like, well, when I'm on my and I day and I eat a donut, well, then I'm like, well, I ate one donut. Might as well eat a whole bag of donuts. But that's human nature, isn't it? Oh, y'all, y'all just looking real judgmental at me right now, like you ain't never done. That's okay. I pray for you and I love you. Just teasing. But, you know, that's what we can do with sin. If we think we messed up, well, God's just done with me. I'm just, 
Because we think, and this is a whiteboard, and we think that sin is permanent. Now, some of the effects are, we think that sin is permanent. If we mess up, well, we might as well just keep messing up because we're never going to get it right. See, I wrote on the whiteboard with a permanent marker. But the beautiful thing is this. We have the blood of Jesus that covers all of our sin. Aren't you thankful for that? And he keeps us. Not only does he cover it, but the blood keeps us from it. And then if we do give in to temptation, guess what? He is freely and just to forgive us of our sin. See, the blood covers it all. And in the mind of God, he wipes the slate clean. Aren't you thankful for that? I am. And I want to stay clean. I want to stay in right standing. Pray, Lord, search me today. Search me today. Search me today. And even though that was just a little science experiment, a little surprise for your eyes, God does it in real time. No camera tricks. No special effects. No science experiments. It is the supernatural power of God. And I'm thankful for that today. And as we are growing as a body of Christ, may we be the people. Easter people that live above sin but not prideful thinking we're too good but knowing that it is the grace of God and that we walk in love Lord help me to walk in love as we grow create in me a clean heart create in us a clean heart as a body that when people come in here, I had, I had someone tell me just this week that used to come here years ago. They said, every time I walk in that church, I feel love. And that's what God's people are all about, the love of God. If you don't know Jesus today, we ask you to just bow your knee wherever you are on the, watching us and ask him to come into your life. Forgive you of your sin and say yes to him every day. Begin reading your Bible. I would suggest the book of John. Get plugged into a local church. That's very important. And may you let Jesus change your life and walk in freedom in him. For he is the chain breaker.